after the age of 30, the bone mass starts to diminish. In women, this can furthermore create issues as the onset of menopause can decrease their levels of estrogen and thus increase the rate of bone mass reduction. This condition is known as osteoporosis. Did you know that in India, more than 46 million women suffer from this condition? Osteoporosis, in simple words, is that your body is not able to produce the required amount of bone as it is losing. In a study conducted by WHO in 2015, it stated that 80 to 85 percent of Indian women constitute for all the osteoporosis cases. Issue, big issue. So we have with us Dr. Alika Banerjee, a clinical nutritionist and an aesthetic physician, alongside me to bust some myths and know some facts about the most common and the most sinister disease, which is osteoporosis, a silent disease. Let's get started. It's a fact. There are two main reasons for it. The first reason is that women have smaller and thinner bones as compared to men. And the second and the most important thing is the hormone estrogen. The hormone estrogen protects the woman's bone and its health and it decreases sharply when a woman reaches menopause. Thus, the chances of developing osteoporosis increase when a woman reaches menopause. <music> It's a myth. Even though osteoporosis is called the old man's disease, but it is not true in all cases. You can get osteoporosis even at a younger age. With factors such as inadequate diet, inactive lifestyle, low calcium intake, absolutely no exposure to sunlight, smoking, obesity and other factors. So it is a myth that osteoporosis is an old man's disease. Yes, there's a lot that we can do in our diet to prevent osteoporosis. Uh, so what are the bone healthy foods? As we know, the two most common foods are calcium and vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D, we all know the best source is natural sunlight. Food sources are kind of limited. Uh, but nowadays, there are a lot of dairy products, juices, uh, you know, fortified cereals, which have vitamin D. So check labels. For calcium, what are the good sources? So all your dairy products, again, are good sources of calcium. Uh, make sure that you know you go for the low fat or the non-fat versions whether it's yogurt or paneer whatever or even milk right uh, what are the other sources of calcium uh, ragi is a great source uh, till seeds sesame seeds are really good uh, and your green leafy vegetables whether it is your palak or your methi even broccoli all these are good sources of calcium uh, what are the other minerals your bones need? Uh, they really love magnesium. They really love potassium. Magnesium you'll find in uh, spinach, you'll find in okra, you'll find in tomato products, sweet potatoes, seeds, raisins and all of that. Potassium you'll get in bananas, sweet potatoes, potatoes itself, uh, papaya, uh, lots of seeds again. Uh, and vitamin C and vitamin K finally, uh, you know, both these you'll get vitamin C in lots of citrus fruits like lemons and oranges, kiwis, red bell peppers and vitamin K you'll get in a lot of green leafy vegetables. So make sure that, you know, your diet is well equipped, you're nutritionally sound, you can prevent osteoporosis. <music> lot of foods that can actually harm your bones and actually cause your body to release calcium which is really bad for your bones so what are they uh, number one would be high salt foods you know everything rich in sodium mostly all your packaged and processed foods are really high in sodium uh, number two would be alcohol alcohol also you know is not that great for your bones not that great for calcium absorption uh, number three would be beans and legumes. So uh, generally they're really healthy for you, but they have certain compounds known as phytates. And what do these phytates do? They actually prevent the absorption of calcium. So uh, what you can do best is to soak your beans or legumes at least a couple of hours, if not overnight, before consumption. Uh, even wheat bran has phytates. So remember, if you're taking a calcium supplement, don't have it right after having something with wheat bran. 
you know, at least keep a gap of two or three hours so that the calcium can actually get absorbed by your body. Uh, finally, a few things like excess vitamin A, which you're not going to get in your diet, but say you're taking a multivitamin and say you're taking like a fish oil supplement, uh, you can easily go on an excess vitamin A, which is harmful for you. Uh, and finally, caffeine. So all your caffeinated products like coffees, teas, sodas, energy drinks, all of that should be had in moderation to protect your bones. Osteoporosis could be diagnosed easily. A woman, when she reaches 30 years of age, should start with her basic and thorough examination. One of the examination includes DEXA scan. So basically, DEXA scan measures the amount of bone mineral density. So if you have less bone mineral density, you can start with diet modifications and supplements. Contact your doctor for more information on DEXA scans. Finally, supplementation. Honestly, my take is if your nutrient needs cannot be met through your diet alone, please do not hesitate to supplement. Uh, you know, whether you see it in your blood reports, whether you see any symptoms, make sure that you do not fall into a deficiency. Uh, and honestly, nowadays, the kind of source of food, the kind of contamination, we really don't know how much nutrition we are getting from the food we eat itself. Uh, so what are the doses, you know, especially calcium and vitamin D are really, really important for your bones. We all know that by now. So uh, 500 to 1000 international units of a vitamin D daily. Uh, and around 500 milligrams of calcium daily is good. Uh, apart from that, what else can you take? You can take uh, a potassium, you can take a magnesium. Uh, magnesium around uh, 200 to uh, you know 500 milligrams is good. Uh, you can take a vitamin K, uh, 150 mcg is good. Again, if you don't want to take all of these separately, you can take it in a combined multivitamin as well. Uh, finally, you can also take boron uh, around 3 to 5 milligrams and silicon. 25 to 50 milligrams per day. Uh, so all these supplements will really, really help you with your bones, whether you know, you're know you in the phase of going into osteoporosis or before or even prevention. Exercises play a major role in osteoporosis. There are three major types of exercises which I want to discuss. But before that, I need to tell you that your body is accustomed to certain types of exercises. So you need to consult your doctor and your physical therapist before starting any forms of exercise. So now the three types of exercises includes the high impact exercises, the low impact exercises and the non impact exercises. The high impact exercises includes brisk walking, running, swimming, cycling or playing your favorite sport minus tennis. The second form of exercise is the low intensity exercises, which includes free weights and walking. So the third type of exercise is the non impact exercises. So basically, it indirectly helps you to build your muscle and bone and also brings about flexibility and strength to your bone and muscle. These include yoga and Pilates. Having said that, exercises only contribute to a certain part of your prevention of osteoporosis. You need to have your diet in control. Calcium and vitamin D exercises, all of these things cumulative together can prevent osteoporosis and give you a better life. Thank you.